Hello, my name is Nicole, and today I must say that this is not going to be the most pleasant message for some people, and they just might very well click off. But the truth of the matter is, is that the televangelists are preaching a false gospel these days, okay? And they've been doing it for some time now. They have been keeping the people happy, I'm hearing in the spirit, just keeping the people happy. Just tell them the types of things that's going to make them feel hope. Make them feel like things are going to get better before they get worse. But the truth of the matter is that things are going to get worse before they get better. The Lord wanted me to put this message together for some reason. Okay, I don't exactly know of the, the purpose other than the fact that I'm supposed to do what he wants me to do. And so that's what I'm doing today. I will be referring to scriptures in the NIV Bible. Actually, the NIV study Bible. And... Uh, Basically, Jeremiah is a, a prophet in the Bible that I will be referring to because the messages that the Lord wants for you to hear come out of the book of Jeremiah as it relates to what's going on today. Now, Jeremiah's purpose was to urge God's people to turn from their sins and back to God. And so the message today for you, listener, is to turn away from your sins and go back to the Lord. It doesn't matter how many sins or how often or what those sins are. The bottom line is, is that God wants you to return back to him because there was a time that you were serving him. You were consistently putting time aside to study his word. You were going to the church. You were ministering to people. You were giving information out. You were also taking the time to uh, listen to people and encourage people. And now you just don't feel like doing too much of anything but serving yourself. Because too many people have not listened to the Lord's messages and you have taken it personally. And the Lord said that that's not what you were supposed to be doing when you were sharing those messages. But of course, we being humans, we do take, we do unfortunately take offense to people um, when they do not listen, we do take things to heart. We do act critical. We do act judgmental. There's a number of things that we do, but the Lord says that we are to set aside our personal emotions when we are doing the Lord's will. We have to remember that all we are are vessels that God gives us messages. Our job is to share the message like the, um, postman, you share the message you, you know, pass on that letter and then you keep it moving. You go to the next neighbor and you share the message and you keep it moving. And anything that that person says or what they're going through or what's happening in their household is none of our business. We're just going to share the message and keep it moving. And so today I'm sharing this message because God has told me in the spirit that some people were very much in love with the Lord at one time, but now they are not. Death has come upon their family and has shook them up. Um, there has been job losses. There have been arguments. There has been people who have ridiculed them because of God's messages. And so they feel like it's not worth it. It's just simply not worth it. But the Lord says, oh, but you just don't know how much your worth is to him and how much he loves you and how much he wants you to draw near to him because it boils down to saving you from the fire that awaits all of us um, if we do not serve the Lord when we pass. So this is what it's all about, Saint, coming back to the Lord. Now, there's a key verse in Jeremiah, and that verse is, Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. And that is in Jeremiah 2, verse 19. You know who you are. That word goes out to you. Okay. Hiding behind the world and all of the things that the world offers, the fleshly desires and things of that sort. The Lord says you can run, but you cannot hide. He says he sees you. He is not happy at the lies that you have told. He is not happy with you telling other believers why you do not want to deal with God and God's people and how God's people are nothing more than hypocrites. And you've been saying a lot of negative things. 
But the Lord says you're acting like a hypocrite yourself because on one hand, you're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk. All right, moving on. We are still in the book of Jeremiah. The Lord tells me that there is no new there is no new warning going out to you, saint, today, because he has spoken already through his word, and you will find many, many warnings as to your lifestyle and what it is that you need to do and what God is going to do in the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 3, the Lord says, If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? Would not the land be completely defiled? But you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers. Would you now return to me, declares the Lord? Some have decided to substitute their relationship with the Lord for a lover or many lovers. Some have even went so far as to try to get an ex back who used to pray with them attend church with them and, and things of that sort. But the Lord says that you are not to go back to the ex. You are not to even pursue other lovers. You are to be content with what you have right at this moment. Now the Lord is taking me over to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 21. A cry is heard on the barren heights the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, faithless people. I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Now let me stop right there. As you can see right away, after the Lord gives his word, there are those that will return to the Lord. Are you going to be one of them? The Lord wants to know, are you going to be one of them? Or will he have to teach you in such a way where you're going to lose your health, your wealth, and anything else? God wants certain people to come back to him. Not everyone. Many are called, but chosen are few. But there are some that God has specifically set aside to do his will, and they are acting like Jonah. And so those individuals are, yes, being called out. They are being called, uh, called out for some people. They're like, well, why would God want to do all of that? Why would he, you know, just put so much, you know, on them? Well, it's not that he's putting so much on them. It's their disobedience that is putting so much on them. The Lord says in Jeremiah 4, verse 22, my people are fools. They do not know me. They are senseless children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil. They know not how to do good. All right, let me stop right there. So for those of you all who inquire as to why it is that sometimes Christians just have so much drama, well, it is because there are those that do not listen to their heavenly father. And if they don't listen to their heavenly father, they cannot be any help to anyone else. So there's no sense in, you know, continuing to ask them, you know, oh, can you do this for me? Can you do that? When they have been backsliding for so long, they aren't even a help to themselves, much less you. So for those that are wondering what is going on with God's people, well, this is what it's all about, disobedience, and God wants his people to come back to him. And then some even go so far as to say, well, what kind of God would, you know, allow such bad things to happen to his own people? Well, the thing is, is that his own people decided that they didn't want to be his people anymore. And so that's why they are reaping like they are. Even the unsaved should stay away from those who are believers that are getting their, shall we say, in a nice way, their behinds beat. It's best just to stay away because you might just get caught up in that. Find a believer whose life is not so complicated, so crazy, so offbeat, and even you have to question whether or not that person is a believer or not. 
Don't take any information from that type of person, the Lord says. All right, we are going on now into Jeremiah 5, especially for those individuals who say, I'm a good man, I'm a good woman, everything's all right with me. The Lord is going to take you back to biblical times, and you are to take this word and apply it to your modern day times. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem, look around, and consider search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. Although they say, as surely as the Lord lives, still they are swearing falsely. And let me stop right there. That applies to you, saint. The Lord will forgive you. He will forgive you. If you can deal honestly, if you can seek truth, spend that needed time with him, he can forgive you. <clears throat> Reading on, O oh Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. This is Jeremiah who is speaking. You struck them, but they felt no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. I thought these are only the poor. They are foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. So I will go to the leaders and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too have broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest will attack them. A wolf from the desert will ravage them. A leopard will lie in wait near their towns to tear to pieces any who venture out. For their rebellion is great and their backslidings many. And let me stop right there. You see, Jeremiah, he's an intercessor. He's one who's standing in the gap for the people. He's trying to, you know, help them out. He's giving God's word. And at the same time, he's like, okay, well, but what's going on here? I mean, they are not doing what they're supposed to. I tried to do this, Lord. I tried to do that. What's, and that's what happens with the prophets now. You've got those individuals and you may be one of them who you're sharing God's word with people and they're just not listening. You're, you're like, what is going on? Lord, I don't see no progress. And see, for some of you all, it puts a damper in your spirit and you don't want to keep walking with the Lord. You don't want to keep sharing his messages because you say they don't want to listen to you anyway. Why don't they just suffer? But the Lord keeps pressing upon you. No, keep with it. Keep with it and listen to him. Do as you're told so that you don't end up being like them backsliding. Okay. Stay with it. Stay with God's word. Yes, the negative comments are going to come. Yes, people are going to be critical. Yes, you might be ousted out of, you know, positions. But the truth is, is that you know what God wants, right? And you know that if you don't put the truth out there, no one is going to be set free. Now, even though they're still in their bondage, the information is in their mind and at some point they're going to come back to that information and one day they're going to have that moment where they say oh my goodness now I get it now I see what she's been saying all these years now I see what he's been saying reading on why should I forgive you your children have forsaken me and sworn by gods that are not gods. I supplied all their needs, yet they committed adultery and thrown to the houses of prostitutes. They are well fed, lusty stallions, each named for another man's wife. Someone, this message is really coming at you pretty strong right now because you have been coveting other people's wives and you have been acting sinfully and you have been covering up your little flirtatious remarks with just kidding and oh well you know how we can be ha ha he he and people are not taken too kindly to that you see and it's only a matter of time that what is in darkness is going to come to light and people are going to really see that you've been harboring a lot of feelings a lot of feelings that you should be given over to the Lord. You know who you are too. See, there's a number of people that I'm talking to who's listening to this message. And God is not pleased with these individuals to those of you all who are not quite receiving this message for yourself. But it is just informative. 
Sometimes God has to do a number of things for people to come to that place where they repent. And so there is going to be some unfortunate situations that happen to some of these people in the future if they don't stop what they're doing. Okay. So the prophet of the Lord speaks through the biblical text. And I am taking this information as the Lord lays upon my heart and speaking to those who this information applies to. You've got, once again, these televangelists and as well as local ministers preaching false gospels. And the Lord has spoken to these men and women in dreams. And he's used messengers. And he's even used the unsaved to come up to these people and tell them about their wickedness. And they have been doing things for years and years and years that is causing all sorts of division not only on their staff, but between couples watching their programs, getting their tapes. And it's unfortunate that they will not repent, they will not confess, they will not repent, and they won't even step down from their positions because they have such a love for money. And so what's going to happen is they're going to be exposed. Some of them have already been exposed and paid top dollar to keep the scandal away, but they're going to be exposed again and again and again until both the saved and unsaved say, I'm tired of this televangelist. I'm tired of this person supposedly representing the Lord. They have to go. And positions are going to come to an end. People who have been in ministries for 20, 30, 40 years, we are going to see in the coming years much, much exposure. Many are going to fall and fall hard and it's going to be a wake-up call to many local ministers in your neighborhood and elsewhere I better get right I better get right quick reading on Jeremiah 5 verse 12 they have lied about the Lord they said he will do nothing no harm will come to us we will never see sword or famine the prophets are but wind and the word is not in them so let what they say be done to them and let me stop right there. You got people in your own family who are telling others not to do certain things, to stop living certain ways, to don't to not to go here or there and not to have this particular friendship or that particular friendship. And these people want to keep doing what they want to do. It's it's just causing more problems for themselves because God is sending wise people to help them out and they don't want to listen. And so when the money is gone and when the sexual disease shows up and when, you know, college isn't complete or when <clears throat> or when a number of other dramas take place, then they're going to cry out, oh, please help, please help. But they're not going to get the help. They're not going to get the help. Because they didn't want to listen to wisdom. For some, it's not even about faith, religion, belief, or anything else. It's just about simple wisdom. Don't go down the left-hand path. Go toward the right. No, but I want to go down to the left-hand path because I can move up faster, okay? And then when you see the wolf in sheep's clothing, and he takes off his sheep, clothing and starts biting at you oh now please please help me please help me please help me help me mayday mayday 911 it's too late it's too late says the Lord it's too late Jesus help the saints help them help those who have fallen away from you Lord Jesus help them Jesus I hope some of you all are learning something we've got false religion Amongst us, people telling us we're all right when we're not. Jeremiah 7, even back in the biblical days, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Reform your ways and your actions and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, 
If you do not oppress the alien, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your forefathers forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Okay, who is he speaking to? He was speaking back then to the church. He's speaking to the church even now. Some of you all going to church and saying, I know, I trust in the minister. I know what the minister is saying. I got to be there. I can't, I can't not go to church. In some churches, it's so much corruption, so much deceit. It doesn't matter who you know or what position you have. You need to step down. You need to step away in Jesus' name. God did not call you to be a member of a church for 20 some years. Jesus, the people that were under him, the disciples, they were not just sitting there, just waiting, 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 waiting for uh, Jesus to show up and show out, so to speak. Jesus was giving them a mission. He trained them and he knew that eventually he was going to go. And so when he left, they had to set up churches here, there and everywhere. Your job is to set up a church. If you're not setting up a church outside of your home, you need to be setting a church up inside your home. You need to be training children up. You need to talk to relatives and friends and, and family and tell, tell them Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is saving. He's still in the business of saving. He still wants you to come on and love him and trust in him. Open up your Bible sometimes, saint. Turn off the TV and stop internet surfing for just a little while and get into the word of the Lord. Oh, in Jeremiah 7 verse 9, it says, will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal? Some of you are still following after other gods and you're saying, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. You love money too much. You love children too much. You love your boyfriend and your girlfriend too much. You're idol worshiping. You may not be burning incense, but you're burning some other things. You're burning your gas to get to these people. You're burning your, your, uh, your connections and everything else because you just love certain people so much and other ones you just hate so much. Jesus. That's all I can say, Saint. Jesus. Jesus and Jesus some more because some of you all need to be convicted in your spirit. You need to get to that place where you say, Jesus, I'm so screwed up. See, I had to do these things. I don't talk. Oh, just because I like to talk. No, because I had to go through some things. I had to go through some fires. And when you have been exposed, when you've been put on blast, when people have looked at you and said, you're this and you're that. Okay, you get to a place where you say, yes, okay, I receive that. I know I'm wrong. And then you say, but now it's time. It's time. Oh, Lord Jesus, because God will put that Holy Spirit in you to come back and say, okay, now that you done nailed me to the cross. Now, let's just look at your situation in your life. And even though I'm the, I'm, I, I could be saying and doing a lot of bad things to hurt you because you hurt me so bad, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to direct you to Jesus. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of you all, it's time. The Lord said it is time. Stop sitting back listening to everybody else. Stop doing what you want to do and tune into him. Return to me, says the Lord. Jeremiah 9. Verse four, beware of your friends. Do not trust your brothers for every brother is a deceiver and every friend a slanderer. Friend deceives friends. Oh, but I knew this man for 20 some years. We used to go to church together. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, come on now. We know some people, they fall by the wayside. They get caught up in these relationships that they think is all about God's business and we're in love with the Lord. And then they find out, oh my goodness, this is scandalous. This is a pretender. But they're not going to tell you that. Meanwhile, you're sitting back in awe. Oh, ooh, I wish I, I wish I could be like them. Oh, but you don't know what you're wishing for. The Lord said, you don't know what you're wishing for. You don't know what you're hoping for. Oh, Lord, come on now. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Reading on. Friend deceives friend and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongues to lie. They weary themselves with sinning. You live in the midst of deception. Oh, and I've been seeing that word around a lot lately. You live in the midst of deception. In their deceit, they refuse to acknowledge me, declares the Lord. Now, if you got all of this going on around you, why would you even want to trust in people like that? They trust in the television more than they trust in uh, the word of the Lord in prayer. They trust in their mates more than they would ever, you know, trust in going uh, to some uh, counselor to try to help them solve their issues. Meanwhile, the mate is the one that's giving them all the drama. You see what I'm saying? Some of you all have been through so many fires and you're saying, when? When is somebody going to speak truth to me? I'm tired of everybody saying to me, oh, I look, you know, girl, you look good. 
Oh, you, you got it going on. Oh, brother, come on now. You, please. You're, you're a good man. Come on now. When you know doggone well, deep down inside, you know that they're just flattering you. You know that you're not good. You know that you've been doing some scandalous stuff. You know you've been telling some lies. Oh, oh, some people are just like Jesus, 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 and Jesus some more. Because that's who you need to be asking to help you. That's who you need to be asking to come into your life and shake up some things a bit so that you can be a better individual. God wants you back. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Keep on going through Jeremiah. Keep on looking through them scriptures. Okay? Look for yourself in those scriptures, the Lord says. The bottom line is he wants you to not only listen, but he wants you to obey. In Jeremiah 11, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant and tell them to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem. And nowadays, you can just plug in your city, your state. Okay? Tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Cursed is the man who does not obey the terms of this covenant. The terms I commanded your forefathers when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace. I said, obey me and do everything I command you and you will be my people and I will be your God. Then I will fulfill the oath I swore to your forefathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. The land you possess today. Come on now. You possess today. You possess today. God's people aren't out there begging for bread. God's people is not out there talking about, oh, you know, I need this, I need that. God's true people's content with what they already have. You say, oh, that's going a little bit too far. You say, God's true people? Well, there's things I need, but I'm still a child of God. Oh, yeah, you are still a child of God, of course. But are you obeying him? Are you listening to him? You see, because the one who's sitting back and they're content with what they have, they're also listening to the Lord. Even though there's certain things they don't have, they're not going out here and being deceptive and, you know, hiding money and receipts and so forth from different people or telling people that they don't have money. When they really do have money, they got money, you know, tucked away because they got intentions on buying a certain thing. They give their needs over to the Lord. They don't have to be deceptive. They trust in the Lord. They don't have to pretend. They don't have to put on airs. They don't have to smile and fake it until they make it. In Jesus name. Well, you know, you know how God feels about backsliding. And so I'm going to close it out with this scripture. Once again, coming from Jeremiah. And this is in uh, chapter 15, verses 5. And I, I don't know when the Lord wants me to stop, but I'm going to read. Who will have pity on you, O Jerusalem? Who will mourn for you? Who will stop to ask how you are? You have rejected me, declares the Lord. You keep on backsliding. So I will lay hands on you and destroy you. I can no longer show compassion. I will winnow them with a winnowing fork at the city gates of the land. I will bring bereavement and destruction on my people, for they have not changed their ways. I will make their widows more numerous than the sand of the sea. At midday, I will bring a destroyer against the mothers of their young men. Suddenly I will bring down on them anguish and terror. The mother of seven will grow faint and breathe her last. Her son, S-U-N, will set while it is still day. She will be disgraced and humiliated. I will put the survivors to the sword before their enemies, declares the Lord. Alas, my mother, that you gave me birth, a man with whom the whole land strives and contends. I have neither lent nor borrowed, yet everyone curses me. And that's the way some of you all feel because you have been sharing God's messages for so long. But like I said, for those of you all who are just fighting a good fight, keep on, keep on. I know it's hard. I know people don't like you. Hey, I'm under opposition right now from some of the most unlikeliest sources. But I tell you what, as long as God's word keeps coming forth, the enemy is going to have to stop. The enemy is going to have to re retreat. 
I remember the scripture that says, resist the devil and he will flee. And that's what you ought to do, saint. I thank you so much for listening. And as always, to God be the glory.